on the beat. I like that, Nick. That's it, that right there. See, oh my God. What's up, Heavy? What's up, Debbie Mouton? Damn, that's fly right there. Let's let that. You can just let that. We can almost. Man, we could do the whole show with that in the background. I got you. That is fly, man. Who is that, man? Uh, I just, you know, I just be finding these beats on the internet, but this track was inspired by Most Def. Wow, yeah. dude, that's fire, man. Yeah. The one before that, too, was that's fire. Shout out to Most Def. Yeah, shout out to Most Def, man. Shoot, send us send us some stuff. We'll play it all day. Okay. Play the whole show. What's happening, y'all? What's going on? This is David Raybon. I am your host of Opinionation. This is episode number 17. It's been 17 weeks of Opinionation, the show we just curated out of just something to talk about because there's a lot of stuff to talk about and everybody got opinions just like an asshole everybody got one so i created a form and actually before we get off to the show tonight i i do want to extend an apology to dan and green who was last week's guest uh you know sometimes when we get so strunk in our convictions that uh, when you hear someone speak uh, against them it just makes you just forget what you're doing <laughs> like make you forget why you're here and the show is opinionation for opinions of everybody. And I only give my opinion really at the very end when I have a guest and even when I don't have a guest. Um, and Dan just seemed to be a little bit pro-Trump for me. And it kind of just choked the air out of me. So I kind of kind of lost it there for a second. But I said, there again, I, I, I apologize to Danny Green. Uh, you know, you, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Everybody's entitled to their beliefs. What's up, Dean? What's happening? What's happening, Valerie? You know, and no matter how different it may appear to me, everybody don't feel the same way about Donald Trump as I do. You know, a lot of people do. They're scared. They're going to get blackballed in their own jobs and their, their own circles and stuff. But I don't know, man. If you're going to speak, you might as well speak the truth and just shut the hell up. Don't nobody want to hear that bullshit. They get enough lies for him. I've got how many 
thousands, over 12,000 false statements. It happens so much now, nobody even cares. That's just the way it is. That's just our president. That's just, yeah, he ran over a kid the other day. Just, you know, it was Mexican. He said, it was okay, don't worry about it. There's plenty more. That's just our president. You know, he shot somebody in the parking lot of the day at Walgreens, but it was Trump. They didn't care. It was just, just, just our president. Just, he does that. <laughs> He does that. They they probably said, you know, Republicans are not gonna say nothing to him. You know, he, he plays with little girls, you know, no, yeah, but that's just that's our president. He does that. That's what he does. You know, let's see how he handles his own daughter. He grabs his daughter no way. I would never grab my child like that. I don't give a damn how close you are. That's still a, a female and you're a male. That's that's just that's just improper. It's nasty. Just like he is. But anyway, before I get off on a Trump tangent, which I do when I do, this episode, we're going to continue the conversation about uh, Jay-Z and his move to the NFL. And, you know, I read a lot of many mixed opinions, and they have valid points. But I still have to say that um, sometimes we have to allow things to materialize before we're so quick to attach labels like coon and sellout because we feel we didn't get the, you know, enough information, you know, first to allow us to feel comfortable about the decision. You know, it's kind of like when LeBron made his decision. You know, it was, it was everybody felt slighted because we didn't get a chance to feel comfortable about the decision. We had to accept it the way it kind of fell on us. You know, and sometimes black people particularly, we're really quick because we, we've seen a lot of things. And when we see a lot of things that affect us and affect our people, when we see something about to happen again, we jump, we snap, zero to 100 real quick. And sometimes we need to just sit back and think about what we're doing before we start labeling people. Um, a lot is being done and happening to aid in the social injustice. The NFL have committed to millions to help the plight of innocent black men being killed by the police, and they didn't have to do that. Actually, at the end of the day, Jay-Z is at least trying to do something while still getting paid to do a halftime presentation to me, is actually brilliant. He's getting paid to sit at the table where no other black man on Jay-Z's level has ever sat before with a clear task before him. And everybody's watching. Everybody. Black people watching, white people watching, everybody watching. Let Hover do his thing. Cap passed. Kaepernick passed on four teams that were interested in him from what I've read. Four teams that he could have probably played for. He didn't get fired. He quit. Now, listen, I honestly hope that he plays again. I honestly do. Just like I hope to book another television series again, as neither one of us have done anything deserved not to be able to. And I damn sure sure didn't quit. So we're going to call in and talk about that opinion. Uh, not that opinion, but that situation with Jay-Z. Do so. You can call in at 747-888-3082. Eric Fagan, what's happening, man? Eric Fagan, went to the police academy together. Carol Hoskin Bergston moved down to the Dirty Dirty. How you doing? For those people that are, like, watching on live, at a Facebook Live, uh, from time to time, phone calls will come in, and Nick will have something to say, and you won't hear it. So I just want everybody to know that if you want to get the full effect of the show, go to rolloutstudios.com. Rolloutstudios.com and just click on live and you hear everything going back and forth instead of just half the stuff because you just hear me just talking, you know. And some people gonna call in a little while and tell me I'm crazy, and some people gonna call they're gonna sound crazy. But and I want you to be to hear that. So just go to rolloutstudios.com and click on live. Um. And, you know, another thing, too, I, I just thinking that uh, with, with these, there's plenty of time for the labels. I mean, that's, we got plenty of time. E even, if we had, even if we had one season, one season, and the, right, the wrongs were righted, so to speak. Everything was all good, and the things were improving for the first time. Will we still be mad? We would still say because he did that first, because we didn't get the information that we needed to know so that we could com feel comfortable about the decision. See, 
we are quick to be in control of other people's money and other people's power and other people's decision. And we don't like it. We just throw it to Barcat. Barcat, Barcat, I ain't going, I ain't watching. And I understand that's a way to force, to, to, to uh, voice your displeasure in a concept. But if you think about it, a lot of things probably were debated before they finally came out to be fact and reality. And based on that fact and reality, we got something really, really good because of that. So this is uncharted territory for any of us, for all of us. You know, Larry, we ain't never been this close, even know a millionaire that made a deal with the NFL, any kind of deal. We don't know nobody like that. Yeah, Beyonce may be from Houston. And they with Jay-Z and they worth about two billion together. Or a billion nine hundred million and some change. Whatever the difference does it make. But at the end of the day, Jay-Z brought himself up from the projects. The projects. Now I never lived in the projects. I lived in Pleasantville, Pleasantville, Texas. It's right there off the 16 and I-10 freeway by the Budweiser Brewery. That's where I grew up. Jay-Z is doing something that we've never seen done before. It's easy, easy to call a sellout. It's easy. Just like we saw Steve Harvey. We went, oh, God damn. And Steve up there with them big old lips looking like he's just, he just eating soup and laughing and jollying up. And, and he was just out, out of place. He was caught up in the hype. You figure a president, a president, forget who, just say a president calls you to the office to meet with you. Any other situation, you would think, like, I got to go. It's the president of the United States. There, are, there is nobody else higher than. But I think a lot of it was before that a lot of the wretchedness that is Donald Trump that came out and surfaced. So maybe we want to give Steve Harvey a pass on that. But the thing about what Jay-Z is doing is it's stirring up dialogue and conversation. I think that's really good. Because once you start talking about a problem, and now you're in the midst of it, now when things are done about it, you can actually see it. See, it's different when someone says they're going to do something in the, in the dark somewhere, they vanish. You never hear about them again. You never see, you never. But we all watching Jay-Z. But he, the way he did it, all he did was open up the lens. And everybody going to check you, bro. Everybody going to check to see what Jay-Z did. Not just halftime. And I know you're going to do it. I know you're worried about it. And I suspect pretty soon Jay-Z will be owning a part owner, a minority owner, and I say that as a pawn. I don't think he will buy a, a completely, take all his money and buy a team. You know, the Clippers was $2 billion. He buy the Clippers, and he still owe a billion in the hole. So I know you're probably coming with somebody and be the first black man to ever own a professional football team. Now, I know on the other side, a lot of people still with the fuck the NFL. I get that. I get that. I really do, man. You know, forget the fact that the players are generally treating decent, making money. Colin Kaepernick still doesn't have a job. I get that. I get that. But I think about those kids that are like in the fifth grade and they they playing Pop Warner and they're getting out there and they're running and all they're thinking about is one day playing in the NFL. And even at this age they are right now, they have to know that their parents are boycotting or feeling the NFL is trash. They can forget it. They don't have a chance in hell because they're not going to encourage them. And when you don't encourage a child, you might as well discourage them. So now you got a problem. Let's see what's going to happen. 
I wish somebody in baseball would do the same thing, to be honest. I love for a black athlete to go into baseball and, and do the same thing on a team, bring up inner city youth, particularly minority kids, black kids, brown kids, disenfranchised kids, bring them up through baseball. Guaranteed contracts, don't all they get hurt. Ain't nobody hitting you unless you run into your own player or you get hit by the ball. And even that you get on base. Hollow. That's where it is. If we don't do something different, then we're going to continue to do the same shit and get the same results for the rest of our lives. I've almost, almost been here 60 years, and a lot of shit still ain't changed. A lot of stuff now I realize that I ain't realized when I was younger. The politics. But it's still the same. Racism is still alive. The disenfranchised are still alive. The only thing that isn't alive is the middle class. They've been decimated. We didn't get no tax cuts. We got cut. We got taxed. We ain't get shit from Donald Trump. But he'll promise. Now Nick was telling me that today. He, he signed a bill, and I see it here. He, he signed a bill that would pay for all of the disabled vets. Uh, student loans. Yeah, it actually looks like he's just taking credit for it. It actually looks like Obama signed it in There you go. 2014? I yeah. believe. Yeah. yeah. I do see that. That it was um it's pretty pretty crafty move by Mr. Trump. Yeah. Yeah, him and Bessie Voss, you know, he's a little he's a little secretary of education. He's trying to pri pri prior to privatize all the schools just like they do the prisons. They want to own education and own vacation. <laughs> White man, I tell you boy. Core getting hung up. Um but the thing is, is this disabled vets. If you're going to do something, do it for all the vets. Do it for all of them. Shit. That ain't nothing. It, it, even if Barack had went that far, you, if you're always trying to always trying to show out Barack, that would have been your shot. I saw what Barack did. Instead of me just signing and taking credit for it, I'm going to see if we can improve it. Well, it looks like he did sign that VA mission bill, mm -hmm. uh, which permits uh, veterans to seek um, private doctors outside of the veteran uh, the medical the system VA. they have set up. Yeah, the VA system they have set up. Okay, well, you know, it's it's not like he can't do something good. You know, hey, even a broken clock is right twice a day. So, you know. Anyway, so you done found something good to say about this motherfucker. <laughs> We're going to take, <laughs> take a break. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know, man. Donald Trump. He's Donald Trump. We, we're going to talk about him a little bit later. And also, uh, Marcellus Wiley had something to say about the whole Kaepernick situation. and uh, I thought it was kind of interesting. It's kind of hard, though. I, I, just, I hate when people try to define your blackness based on the color of your skin and where you're from. Uh, I, I get it, man. You know, too black is too black. But I also think that's a culture that you you may have been brought up in. I mean, if your mom was from India and your, your daddy is from Cuba and they had you and all and you grow up with all your friends' neighborhood black, thinking you were just black, you just had good hair, and they didn't get it. You know, and then... To be discriminated on, you know what I mean, and because it's like you don't look like us, and I, I just I just think that's just kind of cold blooded. Um, I don't know. I to me I just think that's kind of cold. 
But anyway, you listen to Opinion Nation. Thanks for all my listeners, all my watchers on Facebook Live. I really appreciate you. Oh, guys, a whole bunch of y'all down there. Nympho, Regina, Great House. Hey, Neil, what's going on, Neil? What's happening, Karen? Gary? Mike Peterson, what's up, Mike? Hope you come to my party in Houston on the 14th at Spotlight. It's going to be a roast. It's a roast and toast, man. They're going to, my 60th birthday party is going to be a roast and toast karaoke at the Spotlight Karaoke uh, 2700 Milan in Houston. I'm coming back home after 25 years to hang out with my peeps, my police officer friends that are still around, uh, high school friends that are still around, and, and uh, everybody else's family and Everybody from the hip hop comedy stop that patronize that's still around. Hope y'all can come through. Uh, and uh, we're gonna have some fun. It's gonna be some amazing com- I can't tell you the comedians gonna be on the show. Uh, they asked me to keep that on the down low. But just trust me, they're very, very funny. You know, you've seen them on everything. And uh, that's gonna be my treat to those that come to the party. Stick around, you listen to Opinion Nation. We'll be right back.
All right. Let me tell you something, folks. If you need to get some pounds knocked off of your behind, you need to come on. And you live in the San Fernando Valley now. You got to live in L.A. You got to be in California. I don't want you coming all the way from Houston to do this. But you got to go check out the Social Workout Studio. It's in San Fernando Valley. That's like anywhere near the valley that you can get off the 101 or the 170. Jump on down and get on down 218 and check out Alice at the Social Workout Studio. It is located at 21141 Devonshire Street in the city of Chatsworth. She got small group training sessions for just $25. Uh, go to workingoutwithalice.com or socialworkoutstudio.com. Or you just give her a call. Alice Raybon at 310-902-5387. That's 310-902-5387. The Social Workout Studio. And somebody was asking me a question in the chat room about Alice. People are so crazy. Uh, well, thank you, Pete. <laughs> I, I would, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, he was asking me, do I ever think about uh, hitting Alice again? And uh, it was a couple people was like, good question. Yeah, yeah, David, what's up? Hey, man, answer that question. So finally, I, I had to explain to them that I have uh, someone else good and um, got any questions for the show. And he said, uh, new girl is pretty too, by the way. So thank you. She said, Darlene would definitely appreciate that. And by the way, if y'all want to have some fun, and you got a little funds that you can kind of peel from, then you want to kind of meet us down in Cancun. Darlene and I going to be in Cancun. Dr. Smith and I going to be on the beach of Cancun, New Mexico. Oh, my God, Cancun, Mexico. We're going to be checking out Maze with Fritzel and Frankie Beverly and me, me, me in Vogue. Oh, man. You know, that's going to be tough. Anthony Hamilton. What? Anthony, what the fucking Hamilton? And still around, Morris Day, and it's time. That's right, Morris Day and the time. Gonna be also there. Oh, did I say Rashawn Patterson? It's like, oh, Sean Patterson gonna be there. Music Soul Child gonna be there. We're gonna be there for four days, man. I'm so excited, I just can't fight it. I'm about to lose control. I think I like it. I think. I think I like it. So you can still get the chance. You can still go. It's the Soul Fest. Soul Fest. S-O-L-F-E-S. Cancun, Mexico. Come hang out. It's the end of October, the 1st of November. We're going to be having fun. Got to start working out pretty soon. Getting close to that little window where it won't make a difference. So intense workouts about to begin. So I can at least have a full pack. Got to have a full pack. Because when you get over 60, if you got a full pack, you just pull your shorts up a little bit, and they cover the two lower pack. And all they need to see is the full pack. And how you accentuate the full pack is you don't eat shit for three days. And then what's up coffee, drink coffee, because it runs everything out of you. And then you, you just hold the chest in, and then the next thing you know, it's going like, damn, he look good for 60. <laughs> when you hear that, you know you got him. How you, how you feeling coming up on your birthday? Man, I don't know, dude. It's, it's you know, it, it's the number 60. You know, the number six. I don't even feel like I've even matured enough to be 60. You know what I mean? I've been through some shit, but I just, I feel like 60 is way, it's coming way too soon. You know what I mean? I mean, I ain't, you know, it, it still feels like 50. You know. I don't know what that feels like, <laughs> And I know it, it. It didn't feel like sixty, but you know nothing really hurts. Everything's still pretty cool. It takes a little longer to get out the car than usual. I, I was thinking that I get out the car. I feel like I, I look like a Lonzo in Training Day. Like I think he got shot up. <laughs> <laughs> I can barely pull myself out the dead cars. But uh, yeah, man. So now you move on, man. Uh, you know, Alice was a nice person. And uh, so we were married for five years, and uh, we had some fun, bought some property. But, you know, I dated someone after that for 12 years, a very nice lady also, and, and the person I'm with right now as well. Very, very, very nice, Dr. Smith. And um, 
I'm pretty sure that's pretty soon y'all will get to meet her. You know, she lives in Arizona right now, currently. But uh, she comes to town often. And then we get on the show. Hey, Rodney, big, um, man, I'm so disappointed you're not going to be at the roast. It's almost, I almost want to reschedule it because one dude ain't going to be there. Because me and Rodney, we got history. Like like my Kyle said, we got Alex Haley's. We got roots. <laughs> Like a cat, probably got that from somebody else, but he, he says it more than anybody else I know. The address to the spotlight, Karen, Google it. It's it's um, 2400 Milam, I believe. 2400 Milam, spotlight, uh, karaoke. Make sure you RSVP. I think RSVP might be cut off pretty soon, so RSVP, so I know how many people are coming. I'm going to have my special prepared by myself. Jambalaya, which is my favorite dish. It's going to be a lot of jambalaya, but if you show up late, you're going to miss the gate. That's your, that's your go-to dish? Oh, yeah. I feel like every, at least all my elders, every every man that ever was around as a kid had a go-to dish. If they couldn't cook nothing else, they had one dish. Oh, yeah, you got to have one. They could tear up. How did you get to, to jambalaya? Well, you know, I'm from Houston, so, you know, I always did kind of deep Cajun food, but I just... uh Zatarain, you know, makes it so easy. And it's so funny, too, because my girl be like, every time I tell her, I feel like some jambalaya and I pull out the box, she laughs. Like, like that ain't, how you going to make something box? Girl, if you go to Papa Do's, they got boxes of Zatarain in the shelf. That's how, it don't get any better than Zatarain. They put stuff in there that you probably had to go away to another city somewhere to get and wait for it to ferment before you can, and then dry it. And then you, you can't, you, you, it's all in the box. But you still got to make all the other stuff good. You still got to doctor it up a little bit, you know, and uh, a lot of people don't eat meat, so uh, some of them have shrimp in it. Some of them won't have any meat in it at all. Some of them may have, uh, I don't really dig tofu, but maybe uh, a vegetarian sausage. But it's going to be really good. I'm going to try to talk my brother in. My brother fly, fries a mean fish. He's like the big old deep fries in the backyard. I'm going to see if I, he has a birthday gift, you know. He uh, fries some fish. And then my girl is also making uh, her favorite banana pudding. So, oh, I ain't mad at that. It's gonna be on, man. I it's gonna be a good old, that. good old fashioned house party. You know, all my folks from Pleasantville, man. I I can't wait to see these folks, man. All my folks from the hip hop comedy stop. You know, these guys that I started doing stand up with. And uh, you know, when I was a cop, some of my cop friends are gonna be there. You guys, they all retired now. Uh, but in case anybody think they gonna, some shit gonna drop off, they all packing still in Texas. Everybody packing, so don't don't. That ain't the place to come. And which reminds me, <laughs> I, I just, sometimes look at these white dudes that keep doing all these mass shootings. I finally realized what the common denominator is: wire frame glasses. That's hilarious, man. dude. Don't sell the wire frame glasses. Fuck the guns. It's the wire frame glass. That is the sign of the crazy. All of them just about had wire frame glasses. The ones that didn't have them left them at home. That's hilarious. It's the wire frame glasses, Nick. I'm telling you, man, that's that's where it is. It's something in the fucking glasses, something that's, in the frame. That's a hell of a common denominator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I saw I saw well, two of the dudes that they stopped, they twatted this week, had them damn glasses. I was like, oh, they were round, but they were still wire frame come on man come on man that's a great observation i was right a police there. officer brother the brilliance of deduction <laughs> i know that's a great observation because i never i never put that together yeah man so i, I got one more question about before you get to your birthday coming up mm -hmm. uh so you know as you age what's one thing that you've noticed you kind of let go of because I notice people usually change like every 10 years it's pretty dramatic changes in people's life so what's the one thing you realize you look back that you were doing maybe 10 years ago, that just not important? You know, I want to say working out like a beast. You know what I mean? Because, Shout out to Alex. Yeah, but, but dude, I mean, it was like, man, listen, dude. It was religion. It was just religion. I mean, five to six times a week, every single week. You know, and, and you know, and dudes at the gym, same dudes at the gym all the time, and you just, you just, you know, it was it was it was the thing, and then all of a sudden, I mean, 
you know, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, dude, I was doing everything. I was doing, I was taking martial arts. I was taking, I was taking uh, uh, kung fu. I was hiking, and I was doing the gym, uh, working out in the gym, lifting weights. I'm talking about every week, and and the kung fu was killing me. I ain't gonna lie, this motherfuckers in there, dude. It's hot in there, and that 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 uh, um, what's the thing? I can't think of the name of it. You gotta it's wear gi. Yeah, the gi, the gi is so goddamn hot. I know it's, they don't put no fabric softener on that. They don't put nothing on it. I, I tried everything. I said, well, maybe if I don't wear a t-shirt, shit, I, it almost it was soaking wet. I couldn't even wear it to the car. I said, well, maybe if I wear a t-shirt, then the shirt was soaking wet and I was still hot. And then it's just, but it's it's a great exercise. But um, uh, I, you know, with, I went through some issues and stuff, so I just kind of lost my taste for 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 doing all that, and I kind of chilled off for for a while, and I just can't seem to get back in there, man. So that's it. The gym is, you know, five years ago, because I I remember I remember I had I took a, I had posted a picture with fifty five pound dumbbells, and then I can do everything with fifty five. I don't even know if I can do sixty. So I but I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to at least try to do press sixty pound dumbbells. I, if I you know that's pretty bad. If I can't do that. Yeah, that's not that bad. You I mean, know, sixty five sixty five pound press is pretty impressive though. Yeah, but shit, man, I used to, I used to, oh my god, I was doing eighties. 80 dumbbells, 80 pound dumbbells on incline yeah. and flat. That don't make no sense. I know. And it's like, why? I, I, I'd be doing it. I said, why am I doing this? Who am I doing this for? I'm going to get a fucking hernia. For what? Old dudes that are really muscular look weird, man. They look freaky, dude. They look like, man, they do look like somebody that sucked all the skin and the air out of his body. Just, just nothing but muscle. It's old muscle. You know. But, um, I'm gonna get back because you know Cancun. I told I told my girl we got we got to be right for Cancun because I'm taking I'm taking with I say two piece baby don't even bring no one piece two piece you know anything I'm buying it's gonna be two pieces there ain't gonna be no one piece <laughs> and if you get one piece I'm gonna cut it into two pieces there ain't gonna be no one piece we're gonna show that navel we're gonna show because she got a nice little ab thing going there she just ain't worked out in a while you know you know but she putting the pressure on you no because she know it's bouncing right back she <laughs> she knows she say you know. Like I told her, if we if we live together in the same city, it'd be on because then I'd be, be right back to the gym. For gym first, get that because you motivate each other. When you got a partner, you can do it. Cause they, and once you, once it catch on, once the adrenaline catch on, and all the pump and the muscles and the veins and things start popping out, and, and you start feeling good, it's 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 so cool when you got somebody with you that you can share that with. That they can they can do this. They can see it in them. They can see it in you. You see it in them, and, and it motivates you to keep going, man. Was she a uh, former athlete? No, she's a former um, black Miss Black uh, Miss Black uh, Arizona. Oh, that, that counts. They got to work out hard as hell to, to yeah. for that. That counts. Yeah, she was she was in great shape, you know, and she she still is. She just you know. And, uh, speaking of former athletes, uh, mm -hmm. what's up with your man's? Who? Uh, Marcellus. Marcellus Wally. I don't know, man. I got you see, I, I you know I met Marcellus in the elevator at the. Uh, the hotel in San Francisco when we were doing ballers, and uh, he he was seen like a pretty pretty cool guy, you know. But he he's a little off off kilter because he likes the Clippers. He he liked the Clippers when they wasn't shit. That's, <laughs> like, good, that's a good point. He, you know, we when it, he got he had to consider the source. And Marcellus likes the Clippers, so he's gonna say some shit that's crazy. But can you play that? Can you play that clip, or or it'll get blocked off on YouTube? Let me see if I can find it right Because you two be hating on us, man. Yeah, Rodney, you been working on my boy Rodney, man. He he been working on the, the jungle. I went down and worked out one time with this dude, dude. And I was in that's when I was doing really good. Man, this dude, this African dude tried to kill people, man. People been throwing up in there and dying and shit like my I'm not going back up in there again. He just said he said he went to the jungle. He almost died. I said, yep. He ain't gonna be happy till he killed six, six or seven people. And, and you know, it can be like little bit of light dumbbells. I mean, they're like little fifteen pound dumbbells and you just doing these exercises with them. Man, them dumbbells feel like a car by the time you get like a halfway through. And he don't give you no chance to stop neither. It's like, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. He told you what he thinks of Kaepernick Here we go. truly through his actions. He didn't go to Kaepernick to say, Can I? Should I? He just did it. You know why? As he said, we're beyond kneeling. You can keep kneeling. I'm gonna take this baton from you as you're kneeling and now translate this into the two things that are most important in this whole conversation which is the money and the power that can give the resources back to those who are underprivileged underserved 
and voiceless. And I think that's been lost right now because of Kaepernick and the gestures that him and Eric Reed and Nessa are all following. Here's the thing. Jay-Z is smart. You don't become Marcy Projects to billionaire and not be smart and have your spidey sense that can read this. And Jay-Z is guilty of, of giving Kaepernick a pass the same way I was guilty of giving him a pass. I was conflicted. From day one, I was against him kneeling. Because I said, get up and get those resources, because where we're from, your kneeling at, at, at kickoff has nothing to do with our situation unless you translate that, materialize it, and monetize it. Jay-Z waited long enough and finally said, I got to step past this dude to get this right. This is an identity issue. You know why the identity of this movement has been lost? You know why the identity has been lost in this platform of kneeling and what does it really mean? Because the identity of those who are leading it has always been in question. Let's keep it 1,000 up here because my past Ooh, is hot. My past <laughs> has expired for this. The past has expired. I've been going back and forth with this from day one at ESPN. Let's go. Kaepernick comes from a situation where he's never felt the full weight of these injustices. This is a mixed race guy who was raised by a white family from Wisconsin to central California. Respect. That does not disqualify you from talking for us. But when you make missteps and miscalculations, oh, it comes back into play. And he never spoke on this when Black Lives Matters movement was at its height. Think about it. 2013, 2014, Ferguson. When, when Jay-Z is bailing prisoners out and doing protesters out and taking pictures and supporting Trayvon Martin and that family, what was Kaepernick? You know who he was? Taking his shirt off, bruh. He was, I knew Kaepernick back then. He was never talking about this. He meets Nessa in 2015, all of a sudden, 2016, he gets benched, lip flop. Not mad, that still doesn't disqualify you. But Nessa comes into play now, and we all know Nessa. Respect to her and her ethnicity, but it's not black. Okay? So now we got two leaders who don't even feel the weight mm. of the consequences. So guess what mm. you are allowed to do right now? Preach. Have convenience. Ain't no cosmetics <laughs> here, bro. When I'm in Compton, when I'm in South Central and Harlem, that's my, my childhood to manhood, zero to 22 years old. Those three places, I know what it feels like. When you're talking to Jay-Z, who's been through Marcy Projects in Brooklyn and all his successes, He's seen this. We both said, go, Kaepernick, go. And let the cause blindly support the man. But the character is now coming to question. And then now Eric Reed is taking it and giving him cover. Eric Reed is taking Kenny Stills, another guy. Respect, guys. Another mixed-race individual who's not felt the full weight of this. So when you want to take this movement, and I hate to play the race card against my own race. Usually you play the race card against the other races, right? But when I have to see these missteps and these issues all manifest, I get back to the identity of those who are leading it, which has always been in question. Mm -hmm. And now Jay-Z has answered that question. Let somebody who really knows what this is about handle it. Wow. Okay. Marcellus, Marcellus, that is Marcellus Wiley, for those of you that don't, who don't know who that is. Marcellus is a former football player. Uh, he's now he's a... Uh, 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 pundit on sports stations and, uh, and such and such. Very, very funny, very talented. I, I met him uh, on a set of ballers in San Francisco. Very cool guy, very approachable, very big. But, uh, you know, uh, what he says has has some impact. I mean, I, it's so many different angles in that, man. Anybody want to call in to voice their opinion about that, don't hesitate to call. You know the number, just in case you don't, 747 Eight 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 three zero eight two seven four seven eight 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 three zero eight two. Now, as far as the complexion, and as far as him being able to say he may not be able to feel the full weight because he hadn't experienced that type of oppression, that carries a lot of weight, especially when you're coming out to Jay Z. Uh, so I, I think a lot of us kind of got lost up in the afro don't just get lost up in the afro and just not listen to nothing else keep your ear open there are other things that are being said that I think that may be influential in helping you to understand what the heck is going on 
with the whole subject. Instead of prejudging and labeling, let's give this a chance. What we got to lose? Jay Z's a billionaire. He's not going. It ain't going to affect your life one way or the other. If the NFL done everything they can to stop racial oppression, police brutality, would that even be enough? How can they do that anyway? I understand a lot of people just want Cap to get his job back. And he should, like I stated earlier. Next chance he gets an opportunity, if he does, he should. I think it was something back not too long ago that he was offered uh, quite a bit of money to go play in the USFL. He turned that down. If you really want to play, play. If you don't really want to play, man, he just, he just blew his shit. And if you ain't going to play, stand up, man. You should be having press conferences all the time talking about this. Why is, it, why is he so quiet? I don't understand that. Now, I know the NFL gave him some paper. They settled on the collusion slash no collusion. They settled what was a part of that settlement? You think something in that settlement said that you can't not say nothing else about this? So the the bigger martyr would have said, you know what, then I'm not taking this money. Because I'm going to keep saying it and keep kneeling and keep doing this and keep doing that. Also, he probably wouldn't have quit. If you wouldn't have, good martyr wouldn't have quit. He just kept playing and kept kneeling. Just kept playing and kept kneeling. There, nothing would have drew more attention to the, your cause if you just stayed on course. And then when they tried to give you a job, man, they tried, dude. Ray Lewis, Baltimore, they tried to get you a job, man. And you and your girl, Nessa, compared the, the owner to Django Unchained. You know, Samuel Jackson character. It's just like if if I went on a job, I need a job so bad, and you you give me this opportunity, and I go in there, and I'm so grateful you give me this job opportunity, and I go in there, and I put my dick out. And you'd be like, what what happened? I ain't really want to play. And I had to pee. So he just fucked me. I mean, you could have been on a team, bro. Anything can happen. Once you get on a team, anything can happen. Shoot. Miracles happen when you're on a team. You got to get on the team. You got to get in the room. You got to be at the desk. You got to make it to the table. Jay-Z is at the table. Can we give it a week? <laughs> maybe maybe uh, two weeks? Maybe a month? Because if you think about it, Jay-Z and Beyonce is black royalty. It's black royalty. Maybe Diddy, Denzel, a few more here and there, Sam L. It's black royalty. They're different than us. They seem to be cool when we meet them and we get lucky enough to have a photo op and a selfie, but they different than us. Come on, man. And if you got a million dollars tomorrow or two million or ten million or a billion, you'd be different than you are today. I damn sure know I am. I'm changing all kinds of shit. I'm changing everything but my draws. Because that kind of money, don't nobody give a fuck how funky your ass is. They just squint their nose up and stick their hand out. How long does it take to fill your hand before you can walk away? Mm -hmm. So, Marcellus Wiley says that they're not black enough to really have anything to be the basis of this movement because they have an experience what it's like to be black in the inner city. Like Jay-Z. 
like um, like Jay Z, like um, Marcellus, like a lot of people. It's a different experience, you know what I mean? And for a man to bring them up, bring themselves, I, I don't know about it that that has come up from those projects in Pleasantville that have done well. If, if, I, if I'm missing it, call me, y'all. Give me a call. Pleasantville, I know you're listening. Give me a call. If anybody that grew up in those projects that blew up, they ain't have to even get to a billionaire, just a million. Give me a call, 747-888-3082. I don't know anybody done that. Just that alone should say something to you like, let me, let me see what this brother is doing. Let me see. Let, let, get, let's give him a chance. Yeah. So he's going to make more money. So? He already made all the money. He made all the money anyway. He could disappear. We could never see Jay-Z again. He could just be gone. What happened to Jay-Z? Man, Jay-Z, him and Beyonce live on a mountaintop in the hill way at the bottom, bottom of the sky somewhere. Dog. They don't even come outside no more. They bought outside. They got their own outside. You can't get nowhere near the outside. They got the outside fenced up and closed off, man. He ain't had to come back and do nothing. So an opportunity to make a business deal that's going to help some black people that he can help. He's already helping them. The NFL already committed millions. Give him a chance. We just too quick, man. Bro. Life's too short to be that quick. I have a quick question for you. Something good might come out of it. Just got to give it a chance. So anyway, I have a quick question for you. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's anything different from what Jay-Z is trying to do and putting forth the effort to what um, Kanye West or, let's say, uh, Steve Harvey was attempting to do, at least on the surface level? Well, I, I, think, I think with Steve and Kanye, I think well, Kanye reached out to, to Trump, right, if I recall correctly. And uh, uh, his praise and he reminded him of his daddy. All this type of shit. That was just some old oh, shit, so Kanye scary. shit. Uh, Steve looked like he was deer in the headlights. He just, he, I don't think he really knew what was going on. But I think that he figured if there's an opportunity to do something that's going to uh, brighten up and continue his, his cachet to grow at the same time, bring an awareness to an issue in the black neighborhood. Because, you know, Steve does a lot with young black youth. You know, he has a camp and everything. So I'm pretty sure if he if if Steve wasn't involved in nothing like that at all, then I could see like well he might just be looking out for himself. But I think he honestly thought after looking at him and I saw his face on there at first, I was like, look at that motherfucker, just cheating, just <laughs> then again, just and then and then later on he explained it. Man, I didn't know what what I shoot. I thought I, you know the president called the United States called you to meet with him. You go meet with him. And uh, I come down the elevator and she had the cameras and everything. There. He was like, this was just a photo op. You know, that's what he does. You know, he, Kanye, you know, he's a token. You know, get Steve, the token. You know, we got, uh, uh, now he, he freed ASAP Rocky. Uh, so that, you know, that's like, 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 like black hip hop gives a shit about that. ASAP is going to get out anyway, eventually. He still, he still got found guilty. I don't know what's going to happen. He can't, he, I guess he can't go back. I wouldn't go back. You gotta yeah. go back for your sentence. And fuck <laughs> you. You better email me a sentence. I ain't going back to, Shit, you out your damn mind. I was free and I was planning to stay that way. <laughs> oh, wow, Joseph. Uh, Joseph McVay, call in, man. Call in and voice that opinion. I actually like that. Call in. We got a call? I'm, I'm telling Joseph McVay. I just read his uh, comment in the chat room. Oh, um, McVay? Yeah, he just mentioned Malcolm X and uh, Martin Luther King and how they had different ways of, uh, you know, going about their message and changing yeah. things. Yeah, because King and, 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 and uh, Malcolm didn't agree. That don't mean that they was wrong, either of them. It's just difference of opinion. But you got to give it a chance, man. You just got to give it a chance. What else we got? Right, I agree with you on that point. I think as a people, we're way too fast to, uh, you know, lynch our own people. The moment we find an inkling of something they're doing wrong. Dude, it's almost like we treat everything like a relationship. You cheating on me, ain't you? Yeah, yeah. I know you. How you say Because you can answer the phone. Look, can, you, can you give me a minute? You know, yeah, where you at? You messing around. You? No, I'm at home. Mm -hmm. Who know with you? What the fuck? You know, and, and all it takes is just one little slip up of trust. And, and that's the problem. We don't trust no more. And even that, why do you think it, us as people, um, 
try to make someone out to be a martyr for us when Jay-Z is just a man doing a job, you know, who happens to have a voice. I don't think that we should thrust these people in the position to have to be a martyr or to play Malcolm X or Martin Luther King if that's not what they signed up for. No. That's why, you know, that's why a lot of guys, are, a lot of successful people are quiet. There's a lot of rich people out there, you know what I mean? And there's a lot of rich people that they're just not their thing. They, they're not dipping in this. They may quietly send money to organizations that help, you know, disenfranchise youth and stuff and such and such. You, you never know. You know, true giving come from the heart anyway. But if you have no record of it, you just don't have a record of it. But it's, you know, a lot. It could always be a lot more done. You know, it's always could be a lot more done. But on the last topic, I know y'all probably thought we was going to get away all night long without talking about Donald Trump. I know I mentioned him a little bit earlier, but you know what he's calling himself now. Kang Trump. This, <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker say he is the chosen one. Just about right. <laughs> the chosen one. He, he honestly, his believers honestly think he's the Messiah. They think he's the second coming of Trump, the, of Christ. It's ridiculous. I, I, I'm i like, you know what? I, I, this shit is so bad that I can't even watch it every day no more. It's, it's totally, it's totally, I can't even watch it every day. Now. I have to like one day, if like on certain days, if, if the world come to an end because of some shit Trump did, I'm just going to miss it because that's my day off from Trump. You see what I'm saying? Now, I can't do, can't be Wednesday because I have to be here on the show. And it can't, it can't be Tuesday because I'm thinking about shit to talk about on Wednesday about Trump. So it's like usually on the weekends, dude, I try to stay away from the Trump because it's just junk in your head and it's stressful and it makes you sick. You know what I mean? You just, you just, you just, you just, some of the stuff that he's doing, you just, you just, oh, <sighs> I'm about to hyperventilate. <laughs> um, he 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 takes stuff and flips it around to to where it, it, it's what he's accusing you of doing. He doing, and and it's it's like everybody see it, and Republicans just act like they don't hear. It. They're like a dog that's deaf. The dog can see, and they just turn their head sideways, but he can't quite make out what the hell it is that they're saying. Uh, and I I'm just I'm so sick of that man. It's Speaking of that, did you see him fat shame the guy at his rally? Yeah. <laughs> see. With his fat ass. <laughs> right. You know, Donald Trump is fat as shit. And how you gonna fat shame somebody and here you are all all out of shape. They ain't a, they ain't a one they ain't one in shape picture of Donald Trump nowhere except probably when he was funneling his little girl. <laughs> his daughter. That's the only probably the only picture you probably can find of him. But um I don't know, it, it's it's so interesting that these these in 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 they call them uh, Angelic, angelicals, Christian, that they believe this man tooth and nail, man. It, it's just, it's just, it's crazy to me. You know, they don't, they don't, it don't even matter to them. It, it's, there's no rationale. They just, they even say it. Oh yeah, yeah. I know we did this. I know we didn't get our tax cuts, and I know what he said about the Mexicans, but I'm sticking with him. I'm going with him all the way. You know, hey, 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 here we go. And we're like, dude, you sound retarded. Stop that. You know, I mean, we're about to go into a recession, you know, which for some black people don't mean shit because we going to stay the same price. You know, and, it's, and, and your rent is probably going to go down a little bit. It won't go down. It damn sure won't go up. But uh, they're going to get to people that got money in the stock market, got their 401ks. They're going to be shaking in their boots. They already are because he keep jacking with China. You know, I, man. We owe China a shitload of money. That's like that's like me going to my car dealership, and my who got my hold of my loan and just Capital One and just start talking shit. You know what, y'all? I'm, I'm knocking. I want all these motherfuckers here to get up and go outside right now. All you motherfuckers in the front row, just leave. Just get up out of here. You, you just can't do. It. How you gonna treat the people that you owe money like shit? How can you treat people that you owe money to like shit? That's all. That's that's the, that's the question of the day. And that's what Donald Trump is doing with China. And um, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say about the young man. 
But uh, I just hope everybody go to the polls and vote. I think someone sent me a message that Joe Biden is uh, is leading the polls pretty good now. Somebody, somebody said, hey, Gwen, what's going on? Yeah, Biden ahead in CNN poll. Well, he's been ahead. I wonder how much because he's been ahead pretty much. And, and and it ain't about voting for the young dude. It ain't about voting for the black girl or the brown girl. It's about voting for the person that's going to beat Donald Trump. I don't give a damn if Flavor Flay, if Flavor Flay beat Donald Trump, get that motherfucker. We need him. You know, at least we know what time it is. <laughs> you know, you just made me think about something. What's that? What if that's the whole plan? What's that? Is to put somebody in office that's so bad. They make you just vote for whoever. That could be. You might be on to something, David. Mm-hmm. That could be definitely the that definitely could be the situation. But anyway, my folks, my listeners, all my fans, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Opinionation. No one called in today, and that's okay. I know y'all sitting there a little bashful and stuff. Y'all can call. I don't know why all y'all folks I got all these people live just just watching. You know, I know you got an opinion. So, you know, don't feel free to call. You, you can be you can do it monominous me. Do a monominous me. That way nobody knows you. So you give us a call anytime. Every Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, Opinion Nation. And this is my final opinion. <sighs> Where have we come, man? Where have we come to where we finally reached a place that we can sit at the top of the mountain, the very top of the mountain. It's a black man up there. For a long, 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 long time, we had no idea that could ever be possible. They even told us that it'd be a surprise to even have a black president. Then that happened. We was all shocked, and we still hate it. How can you hate the fact that they, a Barack Obama exists, but there are black people that do? How can you hate on Jay-Z because he reached across the line? You see, in order to make change, you have to be willing to cross all lines of reason. You got to be willing. You got to at least be willing. You got to be willing, willing, willing. It doesn't mean you did it. It doesn't mean you're going to do it. It doesn't mean you know how to do it right. It just means that you're willing to listen and give it a shot, give it a chance. So what if the person that does it benefits? Isn't that what capitalism is all about? I think because we don't have it, it's so much easier to judge people that do. I don't know what it's like to be a millionaire. May never know. Certainly not a billionaire, not that it would make a difference. But what I do know, that I could take that money and go away and you could never hear from me again. You could think I'd passed. Or I can be present. I can be present where you all know where I'm at. You all know what I'm doing. You see it. You read about it on social media. I'm going to rap about it in my music. My wife going to sing about it in her song. Jay-Z ain't going nowhere. Jay-Z could be our savior. He could be the person that we need finally. Got somebody in the room that looked like us. That been through more shit than a lot of us have. Sold drugs in the Marcy Project. I know what it's like to sell drugs. Not that I ever sold drugs, but I put enough drug drillers in jail. To know what it does to their family, to does what it, to their lives. I'm not bragging about it. I'm just telling you what I know from experience. So black people, I implore you. Give Jay-Z a shot. Give him a chance. You got plenty of time to say fuck you. We ain't never had a problem saying that before. This is Opinion Nation.